In 2011, President Obama met with technology executives for a dinner in Silicon Valley. Over dinner, the president asked Apple CEO Steve Jobs why his popular iPhone couldn't be assembled in the U.S. The answer was unambiguous. Those jobs, he said, aren't coming back. Can't be sustained here. Candy, there's some jobs that are not going to come back. Opponents of free trade argue that outsourcing, the process of replacing American goods and labor for foreign goods and labor, is costing the United States in terms of both jobs and the American standard of living. Outsourcing is a natural consequence of competition. Just as consumers shop around to extend their budgets, producers shop around to be as competitive as possible. For U.S. firms to stay competitive, it's extremely valuable to tap into the massive and growing global division of labor. Staying competitive for Apple has meant letting low-value added jobs like product assembly go overseas to strengthen its competitive position and support far more jobs in the United States. As of early this year, Apple employed 20,000 people overseas. Those workers help support the American Apple workforce of more than 40,000. That's not just the engineers and designers who imagine Apple products. It's also the American retailers, marketers, and logistics providers who handle the products after they've been assembled. If all manufacturing activities had to occur in the United States, our firms would be less capable of competing and Americans would be poorer for it. Most imports to the United States are themselves inputs. The Bureau of Economic Analysis reports that in 2011, nearly 60% of imports to the U.S. consisted of raw materials, intermediate goods, and capital equipment, the purchases of U.S. producers. Those are inputs to American manufacturers to make products Americans buy. Those goods that U.S. producers import contribute mightily to U.S. output. Even after the Great Recession, the net value of U.S. manufacturing output is at near record highs, and still higher than in any other country. But opponents of free trade also argue that outsourcing is little more than the process of chasing lax standards and low wages. But this is a simplistic view of business. Businesses are concerned about the entire cost of production, from product conception to product consumption. That's why, according to the Bureau of Economic Analysis, nearly three-quarters of American investment abroad is done in other wealthy countries. Outsourcing is mostly about serving foreign markets. It's not about taking down factories in the United States and reassembling them in Mexico or China to serve U.S. demand. About 90 percent of U.S. investment abroad is to serve demand abroad. And if manufacturers were just chasing low wages and lax standards, why is so much foreign direct investment by other countries done in the United States? Foreign-owned companies that have invested in the United States, in fact, typically pay one-third higher wages than the economy-wide average. They support a payroll of more than 5 million Americans, earning some $400 billion a year. All of these companies are hiring Americans, are contributing to economic activity here, and are paying taxes. Globalization means companies have options to produce their goods in relatively friendly or business environments. Despite the advantages we have in the United States as a place to invest, we're not making it easier for foreign companies to come or for U.S. companies to stay. We have the highest corporate tax rate among OECD countries. We have an onerous regulatory burden. On top of that is the uncertainty caused by environmental regulations, financial regulations, and healthcare regulations, many of which haven't even been written. Regulations deemed economically significant have risen steadily in recent years. Since 1996, the number of such rules finalized each year has increased almost 90 percent. The United States has many advantages to attract and keep investment, but we're working against those advantages with bad policy.